So um, we're a specialised group. We do research in radi radiation therapy and um, we are looking at new treatments, looking at old treatments and way to improve them and also focus a lot on quality of life and health economics now in our protocols. We just don't specialise in one area of cancer. There's so many modalities um, that we, you know, people are treated for because radiation therapy targets all of those cancer sites. So we can't just be pinpointed to one area. Well, we are an internationally renowned group. Um, we're very highly specialised. Like I said, it's a unique area and um, we collaborate internationally with many groups overseas, Canada, Brussels, England, Belgium, um, Holland. So, um, so we're international, national, local, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and collaboration is really, really important because it gets us on the world stage out there and lets people know who we are, what we do, and you know, how important our research is. Our trial chairs, now trial chairs have to be a trial member, so they're a radiation oncologist. And what they do, um, they submit a new proposal to TROG. It's reviewed by a scientific group of people because when we're looking at a protocol, we really have to look at the scientific merit in that protocol. It's got to be to the benefit of the patient for us to run a clinical trial. And our focus is always the patient. So mm -hmm. when we're reviewing a protocol, the committee are looking at the scientific integrity of the protocol at all times. Because when it goes to ethics for review and approval, ethics are reviewing the scientific side of it and the patient care all the way through. So it's got to be reviewed and it's got to have really, really good um, ground-breaking information that's going to improve patient outcomes for it to move forward mm. and um, it's reviewed then, then if it's approved it gets sent out to an expert reviewer out in the big wide world. That expert reviewer could be someone in America, it could be someone in England. So they have a look at it and they go, oh that's really feasible, you know it's, it's very doable. So we'll move forward on it. Then it gets sent out to all the sites who we think might be interested in participating because you have to do a feasibility to make sure you've got patient numbers because you've got to remember all these trials are funded by public money so it's really really important that we get the, those outcomes and we we get patient accrual to reach those outcomes because if we don't we're just laying down the public and the money that we are receiving to run their trials so that's a really really key element to the trials to making sure that they're achievable and mm. um, so we get feasibilities back in here at central office and they're reviewed and we go oh well you know there's 10 sites that can conduct that they see 50 patients say we've had a neck a year and so there's really good chance of getting recruitment for this trial then goes to our ASM meeting each year which we conduct annually and the broader community of the TROG membership vote on it. So it's a real process involved before it even gets past, you know, a start line. Um, and then it can take up to 12 months, two years for a trial to get up and running by the time the protocol's fully completed. And, you know, CRFs are developed, trial coordination, quality assurance. Quality assurance is massive for our trials because the radiation therapy component of it, we have to make sure that it's rigorous and everything's tested and benchmarked and um, credentialing for radiation therapy is really, really vital. So, and we're renowned, that's our reputation, quality assurance for um, radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that, that's more or less the bottom line really. We really have to make sure that we're always at the top of the peak and we're looking to the horizon and we're moving forward all the time because we need to be in front of technology. There's no point in you know, sitting back waiting for things to happen because we're here to move things along and with technology, I mean things change so quickly and it's really, really important that TROG are on the forefront at all times, you know. Mm. We've developed all these internal um, subcommittees for all of the different types of treatments available now. So we've got experts, not just from Australia, but from over the world who sit on those committees and give advice 
um, you know, key advice to everything that we do here. So we, we are world leaders in it and um, I'm really proud of that. We have run successfully over, over 50 clinical trials in radiation therapy um, and we have completed our 12,000 patient back in July this year. So that's massive really, it really is and that's only because the public contribute. If we didn't have them helping us by putting their hand up to participate in research, none of this would happen. And I think something people really need to remember about research is that you know, a simple Panadol is produced because people put their hand up and participate in a clinical trial. So everyone needs to realise that clinical trials, they're to better treatments for people into the future. It may not benefit you, but might benefit your son or your daughter or a family member or a friend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, we just want good outcomes for patients. Um, the patients are really, really important, but we also have to consider their families and their friends and their support network and the carers out there because they're the people ultimately who bring them for their appointments, the people who look after them when they're at home and they're feeling sick or, you know, they're having a bad day or they need to be transported here, there for blood tests or whatever's happening. And so when we ask someone to participate in a clinical trial, we're putting a lot of extra burden on them and their families and we understand that. And um, so we really have to look at the whole situation. It's not just patients, it's everybody involved with that. Mm. And you know, our radiation oncologists, our radiation therapists, our research nurses, um, everyone understands that also too and we try and make it so it, it doesn't create more burden for people. Mm. And then coming onto a trial, you know, improves their outcome or at least, at least enhances the quality of life for them. Mm. So that's, that's really what we're hoping for. Um, I think um, some of our biggest achievements are the way that we look at the whole picture. It's very complex. Clinical trials are complex. Um, and so we're not just looking at, um, like I said, improving that patient outcome. That's what we want to do. But we're also looking at the whole arena that comes with that. And that's the quality of life. And over the last few years that has come in into place so much it's really really important um, as part of our protocol development and everything like that. Once upon a time we just had um, where the um, doctor did the reporting on the patients and how they were feeling. Now we ask the patients to do their own reporting and um, they actually fill out their surveys and their questionnaires and they're able to provide us with how they're feeling. There's also um, ones that carers can fill out too. So we get that whole feeling of how everyone's coping with the situation and how we can play a big part in helping them get through things. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say that one of our big achievements is QA, quality assurance. Um, we do a fantastic job with going out to sites and benchmarking and credentialing to make sure that everything is being done according to the actual protocol and how it's meant to be done. Um, sites have come to sites in Australia and New Zealand have come to rely on Trog for that benchmarking. So, and that's given us that reputation as being the best. Uh, pro Protocol is a scientific document. Um, it's normally what happens is a pilot study is run. So a pilot study is really like a feasibility study. It's looking at someone comes up with an idea and they go, oh, I wonder if this will work. So they'll get a little few people that will come onto a trial and do a feasibility for it. Now you may just have um, a very, very small um, synopsis for that. It's not an actual full protocol at times. From that, a full protocol can be developed. A protocol goes into um, any prior findings about that particular area that's going to be researched. So it's all documented. It's a lot of research and referencing that goes into a protocol because obviously the amount of time people spend looking at past research goes into it. Um, from there, the protocol will stipulate exactly what's going to happen in that protocol. It has um, primary objectives in it. So 
there's always a primary objective when you write a protocol. It's choosing one primary point that you want to have as an outcome that you will hope translates over into clinical practice. So it's got to be evidence-based, it's got to be scientific, and it has to have integrity. From there, you'll have secondary objectives. Now, they can be your quality of life, your health mm -hmm. economics, um, all those kind of things that come into play. And the more information you can glean while you're getting all that information from a patient, the better at the end of the day, mm -hmm. because that can all be used for secondary analysis down the track. Mm -hmm. And drugs are very big on secondary analysis. Yeah. We don't like to waste any information that we get. If you delve deep, and deep enough, you can get more outcomes that can translate over into clinical practice without having to go back and have a second bite of cherry and get more funding to run another protocol and another research project. So really, it's important to be able to have access to that secondary and, um, data mm -hmm. for analysis. And TROG have a policy on that where we are happy to provide that to other researchers to use. You know, like I said, it's public money, public funding, and we need to help share the resources that we have internally here at TROG, and we're really, you know, big on doing that. I think that's really important. Mm. So, you know, a protocol is basically the scientific area of the research that you're going to do. Um, a patient doesn't see the protocol. A patient has a patient information sheet. And these are all approved by ethics. They're all in layman's terms. Patients should be able to pick a patient information sheet up and read it and understand the entirety of, of what's going to happen to them on a trial. Mm. Um, so that's, like I said, it's approved by ethics um, and that is what a patient will work from. They'll have a full thing before their schedule. This is in it, the tests they're going to have, the timelines, the requirements of them for that trial and the expectations that we have that they will fulfill. We have to be very honest with patients. Um, you can't hide anything from patients. Um, you have to let them know that it may not help them at all. You know, it may turn out that it doesn't work, but hopefully it will. Um, and I think at the, the bottom line is honesty with patients too, because they deserve it. We, we run trials in so many modalities. At the moment, we've got um, head and neck running, um, breast, um, gynae, melanoma, um, lung. So, you know, there's there's so many different ones that people can come onto our trials for and they're being run at so many different sites. Well, one, they can go to the trial website and have a read about that. That's That, 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 that would probably be my first point of call. Um, because it will tell you where the trials are being run, it will give you names of the doctors that are running them. If you're seeing a radiation oncologist, hopefully they'll discuss TROG trials with you if they think they'll be of benefit to you. If not, ask them. Ask the doctor, do, do they know of a trial that, that might help, help you in your, your current circumstances? As a patient, you have every right to ask that question and hopefully you know, most doctors are really involved in research and are happy to, to move patients into these trials if they think that they will help. But they don't always, you know, they may not always be available to your specific modality or, or your cancer site, but if you don't ask, you don't know. The thing about a clinical trial, if you're on a clinical trial, you're going to get expert care. If you're on that trial for five years or ten years, you know, you're going to come back and see that doctor initially, probably four, five times a year, if not more initially. And then as it progresses less and less, but every time you're coming back, you're seeing that specialist, you're seeing the research nurse or the trial coordinator, you're having all of those tests done, they're, they're keeping a really close eye on you and you're being scrutinised. So you really have optimal care during that whole time that you're on a clinical trial. So really, um, I would say you're going to get better care than if you weren't on a clinical trial because you're always coming back for those visits, you're getting phone calls saying, hi, how are you going? Um, so you're getting opportunity to, to go, oh, well, I haven't been feeling well or whatever, and people are monitoring you the whole time, and that's really important. Um, I have um, been working in research for nearly 15 years, and I moved up here from Sydney two years ago. I had a couple of friends that were diagnosed with breast cancer and were very, very sick. 
Um, and I thought I'd really love to go and work in cancer research. And mm. the opportunity came up and um, I wouldn't be anywhere else. I love it. It's great. And the people that are involved in cancer care that I meet all the time, they're just passionate. They care about people. They care about patients, families. And the support network out there is just amazing. So mm. um, I think TROG's... Trog's like a family. It's an amazing group of people and everyone's really supportive and caring of each other. We'd love people to get involved because, like I said, funding for us to continue research is just vital. And for you to get involved, um, go to our website, which is www.trog.com.au. You can also ring the central office on 02401 43913. That's my direct line, so I'm happy to talk to anybody. So, you know, we're happy to take donations. We're happy to seek corporate sponsorship. and we, We'd really love to get some local sponsorship on board to help support us with our research. Mm -hmm. I think it's a real coup for Newcastle to have TROG, TROG here. I know we are one of the largest groups in Australia. And we do great research at the Calvary Mater here in Newcastle. And um, I just think that we need local support to be able to continue our research. I would love TROG to continue how it's going and keep seeking to find those cures and those answers. And um, well, but I'd like to be at the forefront of the technology and the forefront of the cancer research and give patients and their families really good outcomes. That's mm. the bottom line. That's what, that's why we come to work every day. That's why our radiation oncologists do the work they do. And, you know, all the research that they do, they do it for nothing. They do it for the love of research and the love of trying to, you know, find really good treatments and mm. cures for their patients. So. Um, we're really lucky to have that support here at TROG too because without them we wouldn't have a cancer research group like TROG in Newcastle. Mm. They will keep us going. You know, from a couple of radons sitting over a table having a discussion about, you know, maybe we should do some research on radiation therapy. Well, look at us now, you know, 67 sites across Australia and New Zealand. Currently, 20 odd active trials, 24 in follow up. There's, you know, five or six new proposals that are coming through. We've just sent out calls for another lot of new proposals and had a really good response to that. So, people are interested in radiation. People who specialise in this area are interested. Mm -hmm. And I see that every day because I'm always picking the phone up to ask someone to help me do something. And people are always willing and able. And so, you know, we have come a long, long way. You've got to look at our membership. 300 odd radiation oncologists, 600 affiliate members. So for us to have achieved that in the last 25 years, I take my hat off to everyone who's been involved in TROG in that 25 years. I've only been here two years, so I can't really claim very much that achievement at all, but I can say thank you to everybody out there who's helped achieve it. 60% mm. of people diagnosed with cancer will have radiation therapy. Mm. That's a huge number of people. But, you know, it's treatable now and there's there are treatments out there and there's, there's treatments that not only will cure you, but they relieve symptoms. And because we're looking at everything that that complexity of it all now, we're looking at everything that's tagged onto that. So, you know, we, we really, your the patient's quality of life is just so important to us now and making sure they're as well as they can be during their treatment phase and during follow-up. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's a really big outcome that TROG's had in 25 years, I think. So, mm -hmm. and, yeah, mm -hmm. so, so I just say to anybody, you know, we really need funding, we need sponsorship, and we just need everyone's help, basically, mm -hmm. to come in here and keep going every day.